good, it's already beginning. Yeah. Welcome to our 42nd Amuna class. We're so excited to go together on this journey. Matas Masai, this Pasha, and we have the merit to have Liron Mazor in the studio. He made Aliyah just a, about eight weeks ago. Eight weeks ago. Amazing. Unbelievable. And the 42nd class with the Matas Masai, the 42nd journey. Here is Liron Mazor during the three weeks and we're very excited to dedicate this class to the success of our guest Liron Mazor and welcome to the Holy Land with his family and all his students, friends, clients with so many inspired people that he's connected to and blessings to our special guest in all. Amen. Amen. Thank you Amen. Ellie, thank Amen. you so so much. Jeez, what an honor, you know it's so difficult in the studio <laughs> because I'm so used to doing this in Zoom so <laughs> normally I'd have to look at this angle or that yeah. angle now I'm having to look at this angle. Baruch Hashem, but, uh, we're in person today. Very excited. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and dedicate also to the full healing of Tova Leia, Bas Rivka, and Gedalia Sanya Rachman, Daniel Ben Tova Basha, to be rid of the coronavirus, and that means all kinds of coronaviruses, and have a refuah shlema, especially after all the tragedies that have happened in Moran, um, including, unfortunately, a new tragedy which we have to definitely dedicate. We didn't have a class the previous weeks. So we're dedicating now. To all the Nishamas from Miami, the Rav just walked in. Oh, Hashem. Dedicating to all the Nishamas in Surfside. And uh, it's a very, very uh, sad time that we, during the three weeks, that we have to hear such stories. But the good news is that the, the Surfside community, hopefully, is getting a lot of love and support and prayers and comfort. And we're going to dedicate this class so they should keep going strong. All the people there and all the loved ones, and especially the Nishamas of the ones who've departed, and all the people should be recovered and, and rescued and searched for. We should only have good news from Surfside, Miami. Okay, so we're going ahead now to give feedback from all of you wonderful people. The first thing we're going to say is, again, reminding you that we have our sites with the Rav's beautiful classes and his new safer, Please God, will be coming out on Messias Nefesh. Of Avis as well. We'll be getting that in English as soon as possible. And we're going to go now to hear what did you say? What did our wonderful people say? First, LEG's class. The Torah and help is great. Tada. Amen. Yours. Amen. Shalom. Hi. Good morning. We love all your classes. Come to California in Los Angeles. <clears throat> yes, Hashem. Bless all the family that are with us. Shavua Tov, Rabbi. Blessings. That's from Colombia. Shalom, everyone. Come down to Australia. <laughs> I said to them that it was on a live feed. It would be a very long journey for us. You're all welcome. It would be fantastic. Great class last night. So moving. That was to do with Moshe Gersh when he came. And we thankfully now have his book in English. I'll just bring it out since he wasn't able to bring it last time. Here it is. It's all the same to me. We're going to give a copy to the Rav, please God. And also to Rebel God and to our guest Leron and to myself. Thank you, Moshe Gersh. Um, what else? Blessing. Best of English. Thank you so much. How to buy the new Avsis Rail Prop from the United States. That's what the next one. So please, God, when we do our trip, by that point, for sure, we'll have it here. And we'll bring it with us. Please, God, many, many copies of the Avsis Rail Prayer Book. And you'll be able to get it in New York and Miami. And remember to join us on that trip to make it happen. Partner now. Now's the time to get connected to us before we before it gets busy with Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and Sukkot. We want to get everything sorted out before the Chag. And thank God we have a decent amount of time with Chodesh Menachem Av coming up and Elul. Okay, so now one more thing. Play for us in Miami. We are, we are all sending our names to Ravosh for the 30 minutes of dedicated love <coughs> to all the people's prayers. Okay, so let's go ahead with our special guest, Ram Mazor. Baruch and welcome to the Holy Land. We're really happy to have you here. And we're going to go ahead and remember the class is to do with... Business ethics. Oh, business Laron and the Rav. And the yeah, well, well, actually, I'd like to add something interesting. Yes. This is the 42nd class, and this is Pashas Masse. Oh. Masse is talking about the travels and the different traveling points Amisrael had in the desert. How many traveling points did Amisrael have? How many Masa'ot were there? 42. 42. Wow. The 42 Masa'ot. So this works out exactly 42nd class, 42 Masa'ot. Amazing. We're on the dot. Oh, amazing. 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 So, Rebel God, thank you for coming again for translating, and we'll go ahead. Good. So firstly, thank you. You know, it's so difficult being in the studio because I don't know which way to look and I want to look at everybody and I know the most important place is the camera. Uh, t tonight was a bit difficult in terms of preparing the class because the, the questions are very technical. 
So please just excuse me if I'm going to be reading uh, from the paper quite a bit this evening. Just I wanted to make sure I got the words right. It's also a great, great honor for me to just be here with the rabbi in person. You know, it's also with uh, Rav Elgrad, who I've built uh, such a special relationship with over the years. And so too with uh, Rav Arush, who, who I've really been able to connect with and has given me such good advice about everything, from marrying my wife to even now coming on Aliyah. I wanted to check with the Rav before I came, and he said, no, you must come. And uh, even in some of his shows beforehand, the Rav kept saying, no, that's it, it's time to come back. So uh, in my gratitude, and in, in immense gratitude, I'm, I really want to say thank you to both Rav and him. And to Ellie that have, have really helped me make this journey <clears throat> very real and very practical. And also, of course, without a doubt, I thank you, Joshim. So thank without you. further ado, I'm going to get straight to the questions. Please excuse me again for reading them. Rav Elgrad, as always, the, the poet of Torah, thank you for translating and being <laughs> able try. to make it such a beautiful uh, a lesson that I always love listening to, to the way you translate and bring it across to the Rav. Thank you. So, so the, tonight's topic, like we said, was really about uh, business ethics. And... Uh, a lot of the shirim the Rav has been speaking about recently have been about Havat Am Yisrael, the importance of making sure that we love Am Yisrael and need for Shalom and the acceptance of Ben Adam L'Chavero. And I really thought with tonight, with the Rav's guidance, we can try and bring all these concepts in together and understand that these principles tied in with Emunah are actually the essence and the drivers of business ethics. לירון שואל, כבוד הרב, הרב מדבר בזמן האחרון הרבה מאוד על הנושא של אהבת ישראל בין אדם לחברו. ולפי דעתו זה המפתח לכל הנושא של אתיקה, של מוסריות בתוך עולם העסקים. להכניס את זה לתוך עולם העסקים. השאלה היא איך עושים את זה? איך זה בא לידי ביטוי? אז קודם כל הוא צודק. פסטבול לירון איז אבסולוטלי רייטס. אז ודאי שכל ההצלחה של עסקים זה שאחד מכבד את השני ואחד נאמן לשני ואז יכול לעזור לשני ויכול לסמוך על השני ולא לשקר אותו אם לא זה גיהנום זה מה שקורה היום Certainly all the success in the business world is when a person respects his fellow friends, when there is mutual trust, where people, businessmen, help each other, where they can rely on each other. That is when we have a proper business world. Otherwise, what happens today is literally Gehenna, is hell, when people are trying to catch at each other and to <coughs> backstab each other. <coughs> אז לכן זה, גם בתוך כל בית ובית. למה מתפרקים כל כך הרבה בתים, יש כל כך אחוזי גירושים גבוהים, וגם אלה שלא מגרשים, לא שהם חיים בשלום, רק הם, לא יודע. The same thing applies in every single household. Why do we have such a high divorce rate? And even people who don't get divorced, we have got so many domestic problems between the husbands and the wife. And why is that happening? בפרט, כן, נתפלל על עם ישראל, כן, בפרט לאהוב את עם ישראל. מה, אדם שצריך לאהוב את עם ישראל כל היום, אבל חצי שעה בפועל, שהוא עושה פעולה שהוא מתפלל עליהם. השם has granted me, ever since he has given me this gift of אהבת ישראל that I've been speaking about and elaborating on, the importance of אהבת ישראל, and this mostly means dedicating half an hour a day praying for Am Yisrael. What I learned slowly, I learned that Am Yisrael is not another mitzvah. Slowly what I have understood is that Am Yisrael is not just another mitzvah, not just another commandment. Am Yisrael is the essence. אהבת ישראל is the essence. זה עיקר כל התכלית של העולם הזה. It is the essence and purpose of this world. התכלית של התורה הקדושה. And the purpose of the whole Torah. והתכלית של כל בן אדם. And the purpose of every single person. כל הזמן שאדם אין לו עבודה שלה. 
שבת ישראל זה לא מקום ראשון שלו בחיים. אז לא כזה פרסון, אהבת ישראל היא לא המיין ומוסט אימפורטנט דבר בחיים שלו. אז הוא רחוק לגמרי מהאמת ומהתכלית. הוא רחוק לגמרי. from the purpose and from the essence of what he's supposed to do. When I say to everyone, if you want to pray on Israel, then you say, okay, you're right, you need to pray on Israel, right? That is why when I say to a person, you've got to dedicate half an hour a day to pray for Israel, he says to me, you're right, one has to pray for Israel. But look at the situation I'm in. אני, טוב בסדר, אני בטח צריכים, אנחנו צריכים את זה ואת זה, ובעזרת השם, כאילו, of course we need this, we need that, and with the help of השם. הוא חי בטעות. He lives in a complete... הוא יודעת, אהבת ישראל, היא צריכה להיות מקום ראשון לפני כל הצרכים של עצמו, לפני כל מה שהוא צריך לעצמו. He must know that Ahavat Yisrael is in the first place. This comes before his personal needs, before his personal wants, before the things that he himself must do for himself. The first and most important thing is Ahavat Yisrael. That is the absolute truth. Even if a person no looks at his own personal interest. Even then he needs to know that Ahavat Yisrael is in the first place even before things that are important and necessary to him. Because we are in a very difficult and dire situation. We have to have a change in this world. And this change is dependent only on the amount of people who will join us in doing this daily half an hour for Avat Yisrael. ישפיע גם על העסקים ועל כל בית בבית. ברגע שכל אחד מבין שאהבת ישראל זה לפני כל דבר, אז בטח שהוא צריך לעבור. לא בטח מי שעובד עושה כי טוב ועושה את העסקים, ובטח שהוא צריך לעבור את הבני בית שלו. And then this will influence our business world, our domestic situation. When a person realizes that Avat Yisrael is in the first place, this will definitely affect the way he conducts business with people who is associated to, with the way he lives in his home with his family and children. <laughs> So we must have as many people join us. Rav, thank you so much. Uh, you know, I, I prepared three pages of questions, <laughs> but I, I, I think that you've answered all of them. <laughs> because the essence is, is really trying to get down to, to that Ahabat Am Yisrael. And, I, and I, I, mean, I can speak for myself, it's definitely a bit of a challenge. So firstly, thank you so much for uh, reminding me and thank you so much for just telling me the essence of what this world's about and, and, and helping me get such clarity on it. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to maybe go through the questions because maybe we can get some other ideas and maybe get some more specific direction in relation to each one of the different questions that I've prepared for you tonight. So the next question comes up where in my first years of business at business school, I was once taught, how do you look for an accountant? And the answer came back to say, well, ask your accountant what's one and one. And I can ask the group tonight, does anyone know what one and one is? And some people come back and say, well, it's two. Well, it's 11. And my lecturer would say to me, no, it's whatever you want it to be. And that's a good accountant. Now, obviously, that's not ethical. So the question that we've got to understand is, is it unethical in business to use creative accounting to reduce one's taxes? What if one has a monthly cash flow shortfall and needs to use creative accounting? Can one do this? When I was a kid, I learned that how to do 
רואה חשבון, שואלים אותו כמה זה אחד פלוס אחד, אם הוא אומר שתיים או אחד עשרה הוא לא בשבילך, התשובה צריכה להיות מה שאתה רוצה שזה יהיה. עכשיו כמובן שזה לא אתי, אבל השאלה היא האם מותר בעולם העסקים להשתמש ברואה חשבון שהוא יצירתי, בעיקר כשיש לנו מורכבויות עסקיות בנושא של מיסוי וכדומה, שרואה חשבון יצליח ל... יפות ולסדר חלק מהדברים, האם זה מותר להתנהל בצורה כזאת בעולם העסקים? זה המציאות. That is reality. אין משהו אחר. There's nothing else. כי זה לא מדע, אמנם זה מספרים, אבל זה עדיין לא מדע. המשחק זה לא מדע מדויק. Even though the world of business is all about numbers, it is not an accurate science. צריכים לדעת איך לסחוט לפי המציאות, לפי ה... We need to know how to maneuver according to reality. זה לא... אין מה לעשות. There's nothing that we can do about it. אבל בכל אופן... מה שהוא אמר, אז זה צריך להיות גם, לא רק כלפי הלוח חשבון, אלא אחד כלפי השני. Nevertheless, regarding to what you said, it's got to be not only towards our accountant and our relationship with him, but also with our relationship one to each other. אחד שיושבים ביחד, עכשיו הוא לעשות איזה עסק, אז כל אחד צריך להיות לו, להגיד לשני, אני אעשה הכל, שאתה תהיה מרוצה. שישתלם לך, שתרוויח בזה. אחד זה רגיל לשני, אחד בעד אחד, זה לא שתיים, לא אחד עשרה, אלא באמת, בואו נראה מה, איך יהיה, איך נוכל לעזור אחד לשני. The same thing applies when people sit together, when they convene together, and they're doing business together. A person needs to say to his associate, listen, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that this business succeeds, that I can help you. The same thing applies here also. <coughs> you want to know how much one plus one is? Well, I'm going to make sure that it's going to be the best thing for you. Whatever you need, I'm here to help you. <laughs> Indeed, occasionally you do meet people who are like this and they succeed immensely. Rav, what do you do if you're going through a difficult time in your business and you've dove into to Hashem and you still don't see any, any changes? How do you manage to stay optimistic and still trust that everything is for the best? מה עושים כבוד הרב כשיש קשיים בעסקים ומתפללים אבל לא רואים איזשהו שינוי? איך מצליחים לשמור על הגישה החיובית ולהאמין שהכל לטובה? אז דבר ראשון אדם צריך לפני תמיד לזכור. First thing a person always needs to remember. שהסחורה העיקרית שהוא צריך לרצות זה האמונה. That the main merchandise a person needs to want is אמונה. אני צריך להגיד לך שברור שם, לפני כל דבר שאני לא צריך בעולם הזה, קודם כל אני רוצה שיהיה לי אמונה שלמה. A person needs to say to Hashem, before anything else I want in this world, the first and foremost thing that I want is אמונה in Hashem. ומה זה אמונה שלמה? And what does it mean to have full and complete אמונה? שלמעשה, נצליח או לא נצליח, זה רק ברצונו של בורא העולם. That in fact, to succeed or not to succeed is only in the hands of the creator of the world. And I say to everyone to repeat after me. What is emuna? Emuna. Emuna. You've also got to say it's emuna. Hashem, Hashem, Hashem. Blessed be he always loves me. Hashem, blessed be he always loves me. And I will always do, and he will always do for me only good. And he will always do for me only good. <laughs> A person, first of all, needs to have emuna. <laughs> that Hashem loves him. <laughs> always, always. <laughs> and only good things are going to happen to him. <laughs> ואז עכשיו הוא ש... ש... 
הרבה פעמים, אז, זה עכשיו שהסברתי, אז יש הבדל בתפילה. שלפני שאדם יש לו אמונה, עכשיו לא, זה העסק, מתחיל פעם ראשונה, תעזור שלי שאצליח לעסק הזה. אבל כשיש לו אמונה בראש העולם, אתה יודע מה טוב שלי. אתה חייב, אני ממש מתבדל לך, אם זה טוב שלישי. ואם לא, בטח תפתח לי בדרך אחרת. אתה יודע אם האדם הזה הוא טוב בשבילי. אם לא, תרחיק אותו ממני. זאת אומרת, אדם צריך, שיש לו אמונה, שכל מה שעובר עליו זה מהשם, אז התפילה שלו בכלל אחרת לגמרי. What I've just now explains shows us the difference of how a person prays. When a person doesn't have this level of emunah, he prays for his business. Hashem, please help me that my business will succeed, that things will be good for me. But when a person has emunah, his prayers are, Hashem, you know what's best for me. I am sure that everything that you will do will be the best thing for me. You know if this person is a good business associate. You know whether I should have a relationship with him or whether you should distance him from me. Hashem, I know that you only want to do good things for me. And I'm putting myself in your hands also in business matters. Shadam, you know, Shadak Tov Yelo, as Ben Matak Tov Yelo. He knows that only good <laughs> things are going to happen to him. Indeed, good things are going to happen to him. Can I repeat that a hundred times, bro? I can only repeat that a hundred times. We have to do it. Indeed, that's what you should do. Yom Shadam. יום שישי היינו במירון. On Friday we were in Miron with the Kehillah. אז מישהו אמר לי, יש לי חרדות, יש לי חרדות. Someone came up to me and said to me, I have anxieties, I have anxieties. אמרתי, תהיה, תגיד אחריי. I said to him, repeat after me. אמונה. אמונה. השם ברך תמיד הוא אוהב אותי. He said, Hashem always loves me. תמיד יהיה לי רק טוב. And always only good things will happen. חזרתי איתו כמה פעמים. I repeated the sentence with him several times. הוא בא אל חייך. And he already started smiling. הוא אמר, זה בלך, תחזור על זה עוד פעם ועוד פעם. And I said to him, now you go on your own and repeat this again and again. כל הפחדים, הרדות, זה הכל ההפך מהאמונה. All fears and anxieties are the exact opposite of Emunah of faith. That something bad is going to happen to you. אבל האמונה אומרת, תמיד יהיה לי רק טוב. But Emunah says that only good things are going to happen to you. Smile. <laughs> Can we ask Laurent to say it one more time? Only good things are going to happen to me. Okay. And Emunah is that Hashem loves me. And Emunah is that Hashem really loves me. Oh. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you, Eli. <laughs> Wow, so we just want to just have a little break, one moment, just to remind everybody that thank God we have so I, many names. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree that you all answered Amen. Why? So I get to hang. I'm not going to say table. Is anyone going to say Amen afterwards? After that? <laughs> I mean, what? Is something wrong with you? Can you say? A chair. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, something is wrong with you in the mind. This is reality. Hashem, blessed be He, always loves me. And always only good things are going to happen to me. It's not a blessing. It's not a prayer. It's like I say, a table. It's reality. That is the reality. The fact that you are so far away from reality. So you live in your imaginative, your imaginative world. That there are bad things. Or that bad things are going to happen to you. <laughs> Go back to him and be healthy. <laughs> Now we can say, I mean, I, I think if I can take a break, we've all got to do Ashamnu Khatana Amina Pusan. It's not Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur yet. Sin, I know, sin. but we, we've still sinned. So. Okay, there is an Indian, Elobo. It says, Av is Rosh Tavis, Elobo. We're, we're in that time. And Tammuz is Mane, Chuba, Mashmashim, Uboim. Chuba is coming. We're getting, getting, and right now with what's going on in the world, for sure we have to do Chuba. So I just want to remind everybody that the names are coming in, thank God. Finally, we've got 
a nice list, 40, 50 names. <laughs> Finally, Baruch Hashem, it's time to people are sending more and more. I want to thank you all. Keep sending, keep praying, keep doing what the Rav's asking as much as you can. And we really appreciate it. Avis Israel with Mysterious Nefesh, devoted love of, the, of people with all your energy, of all your kochas, of all your dedication and powers. And that is a beautiful concept. And please, God, we'll get the book out there as soon as we have it, a little book clip. But the main thing is the prayers that you can do yourself right now. And uh, we'll carry on again with, with our soulful money expert, Leron Mazur. And remember, it's possible to make Aliyah. Maybe before we go ahead, another question, we can just hear a little bit about that journey that you made in the last eight weeks. Sure. So, um, you know, if you, maybe if you, if you don't mind, I'm going to just take a step back. Is I, yeah. I really want to say thank you to the Rov. Sure. Because uh, the, the Rav has uh, the, the Rav's made such a big difference in my life. Um, I, I've really become a very strong uh, supporter and dedicated driver of the Rav's teachings and trying to make sure also of getting his books out there as much as possible um, and supporting the yeshiva. And uh, if I look back to who I was as a person, uh, maybe eight, you see, I, I think I met the Rav yeah, probably about eight years ago, and to who I am today, I mean, I mean I, I'm immensely, immensely grateful. So before I do anything, I, I actually really have to just say thank you to the Rav. <laughs> and the most important thing the Rav always teaches me, which I love coming here, laugh. Smile. <laughs> smile. Smile. <laughs> so uh, thank God um, we, we, I went through a difficult uh, year last year. I had uh, COVID. I was uh, in ICU for three weeks. Uh, it was a uh, touch and go at one stage. They weren't sure if I was going to live. And uh, then I was after that, I thank God, uh, Baruch Hashem, as you can see, obviously I made it, uh, but I was on oxygen for 110 days. And uh, during that period, and I was in ICU, I did a lot of uh, the Rav's work. Um, I, I couldn't breathe at all. Um, I'd actually had to phone my wife throughout the night to help her to give me support. And we actually ended up reading a lot of the Rav's, uh, one of the Rav's books, uh, The Garden of Health, uh, The Garden of Healing, sorry. And um, a lot of the ideas and concepts we're actually trying to implement as we're going through it. And uh, the one night when I, I really wasn't doing well at all, I, I remember speaking to Hashem. It's a very private story, this, but I, mean, I really want to share it with you and, and saying to Hashem, please, please let me live and please let me get to Israel. I'd like to, with your help, if I please God live, bring my family here within the next six months. Uh, we still had a few challenges after that, and uh, I still wanted to run everything through the Rav first. And uh, the Rav said, yes, it's definitely a good thing to, to be looking at coming. And also his talks. I mean, as we know from many of his talks, and those of us that have followed and listened to the Rav, I mean, he's been saying to us for a long time, like, now's the time, we need to come back. And uh, I, I really am ex exceptionally grateful, you know, even driving here uh, and speaking to Rav Elgrad on the way. I, I was just saying, like, I feel like I'm in a bit of a dream world. Like, who in their mind can think of, geez, I'm on the way in Yerushalayim, driving to in Yerushalayim, on the way to go spend time with two of the, the really, really special people. But that also mean a lot to me. Uh, Rav Elgrad, I, I love hearing him. He's a poet in terms of his Torah. So, again, I don't want to take too much time, but uh, the story is not about me. The story is about us as an am and how we can together grow and really get focused with the Rav's guidance. But uh, thank you, and thank you for being part of this journey with me and with us, with all of us. And uh, I really want us to make a difference to, to everybody who watches. The, the idea of my course, Soulful Money, is to say, well, how do we create wealth, but wealth from a Torah perspective? We, we're an am and Hashem gave us certain gifts and certain responsibilities. And he, he's guided us to do certain things. And unfortunately, we've lost our way. And my aim is to say, how do we bring that back? How do we bring ourselves back to saying, how do we run our lives with Hashem? And how do we run money with Hashem? And that's going to make us an unbelievable nation. And that will make us. And I'm kadosh and I'm like a strong arm. And, and I really look forward to us building that together. So thank you. Oh, hey, beautiful. beautiful. Very nice. Thank you. And <laughs> אני מבין. זה הצחוק, לא יודעים אם הרב מבין או לא, אבל... לא, לא, אפילו שאני לא מבין מה אמרת. Even though I don't understand what you've said. אני מרגיש... תודה רב. I feel what you've said. תודה. אבל ממש תודה. רב, coming back next to our questions, when I was doing and researching this topic, you know, it's a very difficult topic, and you want to make sure that you present it in the right manner. Because these are really the principles that we are as Jews supposed to be following. And one of the principles that comes out from a business ethics point of view is the concept of accurate weights and measures. But now if we look at that, we'll think that was really uh, not in today's times. Like who really uses weights and measures? So how do we use the principle of weight and measures in today's terms? 
specifically around the concept of business ethics. כשחקרתי רב את הנושא ראיתי שאחד הנקודות היסודיות בכל הנושא של עסקים לפי היהדות ולפי התורה זה הנושא של מידות ומשקולות מדויקים. עכשיו בימינו לא כל כך משתמשים בזה, אבל איך לוקחים את הרעיון הזה ומלבישים אותו לתוך עולם העסקים ולתוך המוסריות והאתיקה שאדם צריך להתנהל בתוך העסקים שלו. זה בדיוק השאלה הישרה ששואלים את הבן אדם. That is exactly the first question that a person is asked. When a person comes to the afterworld, the first thing that he's asking is, did you negotiate with the Muna, with faith? The whole essence of business and business ethics is when a person is truthful, we always pray that may Hashem provide us through something that's permissible and not through something that's forbidden. When a person lies, he is receiving his panosa, he's receiving his money through a way that is forbidden, through lives and theft. So true, when we're talking about weight, it is something accurate. But you too, when you sell someone, for example, a table. Only you know the truth about this table. You know the table is made from a certain matter. That it is a good matter. And we're talking about good materials and you have to say the truth about the table you're selling. If, a per- if the table was created from materials that are not so good and you lie to a person and say to him, no, this is a good table, the materials are excellent, you lie to him. You actually stole his money because he doesn't know anything and he's counting on your words. <laughs> ישר ונאמן במשחק שלו, למה? כי הוא יודע שמה שהשם דבר רוצה לתת לו, רק זה מה שהוא יקבל. והוא רוצה לקבל את זה באמת ממש מתוך, באמת, באמת ולא שום עבירה שהוא יעשה. The Torah spoke about weights and measures and said that they've got to be accurate as an example to how a person needs to conduct himself in the business world. This means that a person has got to be truthful and accurate and this should be his conduct. And why is that? Because a person who has a moon and knows that what he's supposed to receive, that is what he's going to get. And he wants to make sure that he's going to receive it in a truthful way. and proper manner, without doing any sin or any transgression on the way, without lying, without stealing, without being a thief. Rav, one of the um, concepts that we've got in the Torah is called Onat Mamon, uh, monetary deception. And uh, something that's disturbed me for a long time is, if we look at the Am, where Am Israel is at the moment, unfortunately, there seems to be that there is a lot of deception. And when people think, of doing business potentially with Israelis all over the world, people are very nervous. Sometimes they're excited, but sometimes there is a nervousness because they're not sure what's going on underhandedly with the deal. What, uh, we're going through a lot of corona, and we're going through a lot of challenges at the moment. Is it something to be concerned about that Hashem is going to keep knocking on our door until we wake up? And how do we make sure that we all start to really start cheering the knocking? Because it seems like None of us are. I mean, we've gone through this COVID period. We've gone through this hibernation period. We've gone through this strong message of saying something needs to change, but nothing's changed. And this is really us repeating the past and not doing any changes. How, how do we in ourselves and how do we as an am and, and, and also how do we influence the people around us to start saying it's time for us to listen because, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't think we're listening at the moment. I don't think we're really getting the message. 
how do we change that? How do we wake ourselves up? כבוד הרב, אחד המושגים שיש לנו בכל הנושא של עולם העסקים בתורה זה המושג הזה של עונת ממון. לצערנו הרב אנחנו רואים שזה דבר מאוד מאוד רווח. יש אנשים שמאוד חוששים לעשות עסקים עם ישראלים בגלל הסיבה הזאת. השם כל כך נוקש על הדלתות שלנו עם הקורונה ועם כל האסונות שקורים, וזה לא נראה שאנשים מתעוררים, זה לא נראה שאנשים משתנים. איך יוצרים את השינוי הזה? מה עושים לגבי זה? הוא צודק. יש רק עצה אחת ויחידה. There's only one and only advice that we can do. שכל אחד יעשה אחת אישה ביום. That every single person should start, start praying for a daily half an hour. ומתפלל. And he should pray. שכל עם ישראל יעשו תשובה שלמה. That all of עם ישראל will do full and complete תשובה. בפרט. Especially. אז שנאת חינם. On hating each other for no reason, thou shan't hate your brother in your heart, and strengthening themselves in Ahabat Yisrael, you should love your fellow friend like you love yourself, and all the mitzvahs between man and fellow man, עונת ממון, עונת אפילו, עונת דיבור אפילו, אפילו עונה ש... ממש כמה... And one of the greatest transgressions of בן אדם לחברו between man and fellow man is monetary deception. The Gemara, the Shulchan Aruch, elaborates about the severity of this sin so much. It's not just deceiving each other on a, money, on a, on a financial issue and on a business matters. It's also deceiving each other with words, on advarim, saying things that are deceiving him, thinking other things that he should. <laughs> I'm very very happy and delighted that Liron is in this video because he is speaking through this aspect of commerce that we should see another direction another outlook of how much Am Yisrael need to do tshuva on this whole matter of Ben Adam Lechavero ממש, ממש, גם כואב מאוד, וכואב מאוד את המציאות והעוד שיש בזה, כזה שם רע נצר על היהודים. It is also such a painful thing to see that there's such a bad name on the Jewish people, on the way they conduct business. It is desecrating the holy name of Hashem. נורא מאוד מאוד. Terrible, absolutely terrible. <laughs> It is a very terrible thing. Obviously, what I've been speaking about, praying for Am Yisrael, people haven't, ma- people haven't managed to fathom it. Maybe today, looking at this aspect of business, we can understand how much we need to pray for Am Yisrael to do tshuva and to repent, especially on all these issues of Ben Adam Lechavro, of how to conduct ourselves with our fellow men. Thank you, Rav. So what is the solution? What's the solution, Livon? So, so Rav, I think for me, are you asking me in terms of like you what sharing what you've just shared with us? Or, Rav Shoel, you can't ask me from my, my, my feeling. Rav Shoel, you can't ask me from my feeling. Ah. This is my, this is my, it's not. Let's hear uh, both. I'm a bit embarrassed because uh, <laughs> so I, I think the essence, uh, you know, I, I actually get a bit upset by it because I think here yeah, we're supposed to be an Am Kadosh. that uh, we're there to really connect with Hashem, but we've forgotten our ways. And um, I think in essence, we have to find some way because I think Hashem is going to keep knocking on our door until we're able to uh, really get the, the, the concept and the, the ideas of, of, of business ethics right. Um, in terms of what the Rav said just now, that it's uh, really important in terms of Ahavat Am Yisrael and in terms of Emunah, 
to make sure that we, we build a nation together and at the same time to make sure that we're dominating for the um for at least 30 minutes a, a day so that we really can try and bring ourselves all back to the the, the essence of who we are and, and the power that we've got as a, as a, as a proper nation a, a nation of Hashem and, and that connection is so important very good thank you Lord very nice for the Abu Takmitov is a good student <laughs> <laughs> one, of the, one of the things I just want to mention the, the, about Laurent just as a praise and a give motivation to everyone out there is that thank God that we have people like Laron who invest in the Rav Svarim, the Garden of Amuna series. You can get them, obviously, we see on the on the site there, but underneath the video with Breslev.com, B-R-E-S-L-E-V.com, and you can also phone us direct. You can also reach to us below, all the links below, and email us. However you want to get the Svarim, it's all there in the Breslev store. Just like Laron, he gets not just a few Svarim for himself or a few of his friends, he gets tens, maybe 20, even hundreds of Svarim and gives them out in the community when he was in South Africa. And now he's already uh, on the way here to Israel. I think there was waiting cartons of Svarim waiting for Laron, not just a small amount, a large amount. And he's already talking about getting more. This is the kind of sharing a Muna global that we need in this time right now. The, the Muna from the Garden of Muna series from the Rav needs to go global. It's the biggest solution to, and comfort to all the tragedies and all the difficulties we're going through as the Rav is saying and we'll go back again now hear the second uh, answer to, of the Rav solution to the question I think the reality is that in fact the concept of Armageddon, what Armageddon really and truly is about, is that we don't have the Torah influencing the way all of Amisrael think. Every group is led by someone who he himself needs a lot of mercy from heaven. And he becomes a leader. And like we said, people are not working on the most important and main thing. People are so far away from the essence of things. Those who are called far away, people who are distant, what does it mean being distant? People who are called distant, we can grasp the concept, but even people who are coming closer, even they are so distant from the real purpose and essence of the Holy Torah. Therefore, even if I wanted to have a convention, the diversity between the different opinions is so extreme and intense. The only thing that we have remaining to do is prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. <laughs> that through prayer there's going to be a miracle. We need here a change. We need here an incredible change. <laughs> Something that comes from the heavenly realm, a heavenly influence. Yeah, so. May it be so. Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow, let's go ahead. Please, they're on. Uh, from a time perspective, I don't, I don't know that, uh, I don't want to, how much time have we got? Another 10 minutes. Okay, so, perfect, yeah. perfect. So coming back to uh, more the halachic side of, of our discussion is, 
I found specifically in Israel, a lot of people have asked me to pay them in cash instead of me putting money into a, a bank account or using one of the applications, a bit a cash box to move money into them. And, and sometimes the, the sense that I'm getting is that they're trying to uh, find ways to not pay tax so that they can make more money. The question is, is this allowed? Is this something that's okay? Or is it something that we need to be a bit more stricter about? And what do you do if you're the person that, that, that as I as a, a, a client, that, that somebody comes to me and says to me they want me to pay cash, how do I then turn around and say, definitely not, I'm only going to be paying you um, the, the money in terms of a bank transfer or something else? אחד הדברים שנוכחתי לראות כאן בארץ זה שהרבה אנשים מבקשים שהתשלומים יעצו רק ממזומן ולא דרך העברות בנקאיות או בצורה שיש לזה רישום והתחושה שלי שמנסים להתחמק מתשלום מיסים וכדומה האם זה משהו שהוא משהו מותר ומה אני אמור לעשות אם זה אסור אם מישהו בא אליי ודורש ממני לעשות את זה איך אני יכול לומר לו בצורה החלטית לא אני לא עושה את זה מה צריך להיות היחס שלנו לגבי זה? אז באמת, מי ש... כל פעם שומעים על עוד אחד ועוד אחד שיושב בבית סוהר שנים בגלל שהוא <laughs> עשה את הדברים הלא נכונים האלה. Every single time we hear about another person, another person who's sitting in jail because he did these things that are forbidden. And who put them into prison? Hashem put them into prison. You can lie and cheat whoever you want. But you can't cheat Hashem. The fact is that people who I know very well, They say to me, I don't care, I am going and I'm conducting myself straightforward way according to the book. Whatever I'm supposed to receive, I'll receive. <laughs> I sleep peacefully. I don't risk anyone. True, this is considered to be Yirat Aonish, fear of punishment. It is also a good thing. Because most people can love Hashem and be connected to Hashem only through the fear of punishment. שוכחים דבר אחד שוכחים. זוכרים שיש בשמיים משרד של רואי חשבון והנהלת חשבונות. Truly a person who lives with the truth knows that what he is supposed to get he will get. People forget one thing. They forget that in the heavenly realm there's a very big accounting firm and there they decide how much money you're going to receive. And they open books there in the heavenly realm. And there you can't lie, you can't cheat. Here you can do it, but there, absolutely. There the books are accurate and exact. Don't be a fool. If you truly have the knowledge that the creator of the world decides how much money you're going to receive, you don't have to do anything that is forbidden or lie for. On the contrary, you'll be embarrassed to lie and to cheat. Even if a person stole, for example, What he stole is something he was supposed to receive. But he received it in a wrongful way by transgressing what the Torah said. If he would have waited, he would have received it in a permissible way. In short, 
חוזרים תמיד לתכונת התחלה שאני עובד עם כולם. מה שאמר רבי נחמן ברסלב, העיקר זה אמונה. מה שגמרא אומרת שכל התורה עומדת על אמונה. וכל הספרים כתוב שהתכלית של הכל זה אמונה. מי שיש לו אמונה. A person who has a muna, he knows that there are counters up there in the heavenly realm. And he doesn't even do a small movement in order to receive money. because what he is supposed to get in the heavenly realm the accounting firm will write him the check that he needs to get so a person who has a muna he smiles again we need to remember again what is a muna Hashem blessed be he always loves me and I will always have only good things smile <laughs> <laughs> wow the last five minutes we're going to go into a special special question please go the run we'll leave it to Lauren to choose it and we'll end off the class with some inspiration a little bit before we go ahead for the rest of the three weeks if I've got one question or I've got two questions if you can keep them <laughs> on, maybe <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of a pressure yes okay 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 <laughs> Rav, how, how does one keep uh, his channels of wealth open for business and how does one ensure or oh, sorry let me rephrase the question how does one open one's channels uh, when in of wealth when doing business and how does one make sure that they remain open all the time and a, a, a side question on the side of that is I wanted to just also bring in halakha the importance of paying people on time how, how could we bring these two ideas or concepts together to end off on a beautiful high note. כבוד הרב, איך דואגים לפתוח את צינורות השפע כשעושים עסקים, ואיך דואגים גם להשאיר אותם פתוחים, ועל אותו הקשר, על החשיבות של לשלם לשכיר בזמנו, איך מקשרים את כל זה ביחד עם צינורות השפע? קודם כל צריכים להזכיר כולם שהשם הזיקה אותי לכתוב ספר, קוראים לו בגן העושר. First of all, I need to remind everyone that Hashem merited me to write a book which is called In the Garden of Riches. יש כדאי לכל אחד שרוצה שקצת יהיה לו אמונה בעניין שנלמד את הספר. And anyone who wants to have a bit of faith, especially on this aspect of business, should learn that book. יש הלכות. There are halachas, rules and regulations. בעניינים של מסחר. On the whole aspect of commerce. ויש דברים שהם חמורים מאוד מאוד. And there are some things that are extremely forbidden and severe. Like for example, not paying your employee on time. And a person truly needs to make sure that he will not be the cane. of Hashem blessed be he. Through him, the creator of the world, will strike another person. He only wants to be the funnel of good things. That through him, good things will pass. That the bounty, the bountiness will pass. To others. יש לו אמונה. So when a person has אמונה, אז באמת הצינורות פתוחים. Indeed, his channels are completely open. אם הוא לא, אם הוא לא יעשה שום עבירה, and if he won't do any single sin, any transgression, הצינורות רק יהיו פתוחים, בטוחים זה באמת. Those channels will remain open for always. כשאדם עושה עבירות, אז... But when a person sins, אז... אז הוא סותם את ה... הוא סוגר את הצינות שלו. He's shutting and closing his own channels. 
שהוא התעורר והבין, אה, איפה טעיתי? ומי זה? אם הוא רוצה להתעורר ולהתעורר 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 Wow, what a class. Unbelievable. Laron, thank you again for coming. We really appreciate it. A 40-second class, our fourth encounter, but this time in person. <laughs> Ali- Aliyah. So, so I think also in, in honor of this class, uh, let's give away a few things. And yes. uh, I think um, to, uh, I'm happy to sponsor 18 uh, Garden of Riches and 18... A garden of gratitude and whoever's wow. listening let them uh, contact you and I'll pay for their delivery that should be anywhere in the world uh, and I take it a step further and I say uh, match me match me and let's spread this let's, let's do this together wow so, 18 uh, gar- uh, gardens of riches and garden of the moon yeah, and, and wherever it is I'm happy to cover the cost of it and also as a sign of gratitude to, to the Rav do you know when I, when I came on Aliyah the most important thing was Uh, to show my gratitude to the Rav. So like Eli said, I actually had books delivered uh, to me that were waiting for me at basically the day that I arrived so I could distribute it in my new community in Tel Mond. Uh, so thank God I've uh, distributed all of them and I, I need to get the next batch. Uh, just Ali also had its own way of me trying to fit back into society and find my feet. But uh, tonight's a great opportunity and, and, and I want to do it. I want to share with all of us as much as possible. It, let's get the arm back to a place of, of Ahavah. And um, Eli, I'm going to let you just take control of that. And even if you're watching the recording um, and we haven't reached the 18 yet, I'll, I'll, if Eli just gives me the names and just tells me uh, where I need to put the, the money, I'm, I'll do it with pleasure and, and match me. Please match me. Amazing. So that means another 36 books. I say that everyone should learn from the world. Everyone should know the highest level of the world. is investing it in distribution of the moon and the books. You can give a person a million dollars. It's not certain that you'll help him. You give him a book, you're helping him in this world and in the heavenly realm also. So everyone should strengthen themselves, not only learning their books, but dedicating your tithe in order to buy books and to distribute them to others. I pray for this every single day, that people should strengthen themselves, this whole concept of distribution of Emunah. Smile. Wow, what a class. Unbelievable. We want to invite you to join us for our 43rd Amunah class. That will be Rosh Chodesh Menachem Av, a whole new time period. And we are yet to announce the guest. It could be Rav Moshe Friedman, but we're still just finalizing the next week. He just, he's come from London and got to join us in the Holy Land also in this special time that we're in. Anyhow, we'll keep going ahead. Thank you again for joining. Please reach out for the uh, 36 beautiful books that Laurent Mazur is offering and match that. I get another 36 and another 36. Keep getting the Svarim more and more global. Please go to Muna Global. Reach out with the names. And thank you again for joining us. We have a song maybe just to end off. Something. Uh, names. 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 More names than names. I want. We have, thank God, 40, 50 names. That's a big increase. But it needs to go to hundreds. And I'll be here all night giving them over to the Rav. Baruch Hashem. As my name, I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael Chai. I'm Yisrael, I'm Yisrael, I'm Yisrael Chai. Odavinu Chai. Odavinu Chai. Odavinu, Odavinu, Odavinu Chai. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel Chai. Od Avinu, Od Avinu, Od Avinu Chai. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel Chai. Od Avinu, Od Avinu, Od Avinu Chai. I'm Israel Chai. I'm Israel Chai. I'm Israel, I'm Israel, I'm Israel Chai. Od Avinu Chai, Od Avinu.